I give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahabra Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, the bondage to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who taught us His truth. Honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one-third of our people who are the true Israelites of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Central Indians that sincerely return it back to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And like the lesson that I recently just did, the smart water, well, Esau is doing a lot of things during these last days to prepare us for his mark. As a matter of fact, let me get that scripture real quick. Yeah, because Esau is trying to prepare us, set us up for his mark. Job 16 and 12, I was at ease, but he had broken me asunder. He had also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. Now we're gonna get how this article applies to that. Esau setting up the people for his mark. Now let's read the title. A black couple, or a Hebrew couple, or an Israelite couple, says Texas authorities, which is a so-called white man, seized their newborn because they chose a midwife over a hospital. So they chose a stay at home, natural kind of birth. You know, not in a hospital in the presence of all these devils. Now let's read the bottom. Dallas residents Rodney and Tamisha Jackson say Dallas CPS and police took their newborn daughter, Mila, last week, shortly after her home birth. Yeah, so gave birth at home. Then here come these white devils coming to take the child. Let's continue. And they don't know if or when they'll get her back. So yeah, she been gone for over a week. Don't know when they're going to get her back or if they're going to get her back. All because they gave birth at home. Now, what's the issue here? Well, there is no issue. And that's the problem. So, this is a problem with the so-called white man. We're going to show why. Now, this ain't nothing new. Now, we're going to look at the earliest account of what's going on in the book of Exodus. Because, just like now, the white man taking our children, trying to kill our children at birth. You know, trying to blame it on the medical mistake. Or, you know, something else. But, let's look at this. Exodus 1 and 15. And the king of Egypt, who was Pharaoh, spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, Shifra, and the name of the other, Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. So, told the women that was helping the Hebrew women give birth at the Hebrew women, at the Israelite women, at the black, Hispanic, Native American, and Seminole Indian women give birth to a son, you should kill him. And this is them trying to exterminate the Israelites, just like today, because the man carries the seed. So if you can exterminate that man, that race, that nation will die off. Let's continue. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then shall she live. So, yeah. The difference between ancient Egypt and this new spiritual Egypt. What they did in ancient Egypt, that was a form of Planned Parenthood. You know, that was a form of birth control. Well, when a child is born then they can kill it. Well, in the spiritual Egypt, they perfected birth control. 
you know, the child ain't got to be born for these either mice can t to kill it. They can kill the child before the child is even born. You know, abortion, plan B, or they can just prevent you from conceiving a child altogether through birth control medication. Let's continue. All right, but the midwives fear Yahweh and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive, saved the Hebrew babies. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come unto them. So the Egyptian women said the Hebrew women, the black Hispanic Native American and Seminole Indian women can give birth um, in the quickness. They, they give birth to these babies before the midwives can even get to the room. Now, this was caused by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because as you read the whole Exodus, the first chapter, the more we are oppressed as a people, the more fertile we get. The more we oppress, the more we give birth. Not only that, the more we are oppressed and the more in danger we are, the faster we give birth. Our people was in trouble. They was greatly oppressed with, with, with forced hard labor. And not only that, um, the people knew, the Lord knew that, hey, they trying to kill the Hebrew Israelite babies. So the Lord put the spirit on our women to give birth at a rapid pace. And that's the same now. We are heavily oppressed and we coming into a time of great trouble. Jacob's trouble. Well, a lot of our women going to be giving birth, you know, at home. They might not make it to a hospital in time. They might give birth in the car. Not only that, because of all the wickedness that's been coming out in these hospitals, how our women dying during childbirth, how our children most likely to die after birth, or most likely to have cerebral palsy, or some other kind of complication. You know, our women are choosing to give birth at home, and which, you know, they don't need to give birth at a hospital with Esau's medications. We just read because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women or these white Edomite women. For the Hebrew women are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in to them. So our women are able to give birth, you know, pretty rapidly. And all this stuff that Esau taught our women that they need the epidural, the needle, the medication, all these nurses in the room. You don't need none of that stuff. We didn't have it back then. But let's get on to Revelation. We're going to read chapter 12. We're just going to read verse 4. Actually, we're going to go up to verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. We know this red dragon represents the so-called white man, but more specifically, the Roman Empire, which would be the empire that was in power during the time of Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, the Messiah. So, and we know the story about Yahweh Shai when he was born, that King Herod wanted to find a baby Messiah who is Yahweh Shai, and he wanted to destroy him, which we're not going to get those scriptures, but we can read about it here, kind of. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. This is the Roman Empire, the so-called white man, and his tail, the red dragon, drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, 
which is ready to be delivered. Who is this woman? This woman represents the nation of Israel. Or, if you want to put it this way, this woman, you can think of it as Mary, the mother of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Now let's continue. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So yeah, King Herod wanted to destroy the baby Messiah as soon as he was born. Just like these Edomites today seek to devour, to destroy, to kill our children as soon as they be born. They seek to devour, to kill our children before they be born. <clears throat> Abortions, playing bees and stuff. But yeah, so what we read right here, black couple, Hebrew couple says, Texas authorities seized their newborn because they chose a midwife over a hospital. And you know, they took her newborn you know, shortly after her home birth, it's because they want to devour the child. They should have just been happy. Congrats, you had a baby. You did it all by yourself, you know? Now you can see if you want to do a couple checkups to see if the baby healthy, but of course the baby healthy, you know? But that's what's going on. They want to devour our children as soon as they be born. Now, we also going to get into Job 16 and 12. And this is no different across our different captivities. This is referring to the Roman Empire for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Then we know America is modern day Rome. So this goes for America as well. They seek to devour our children before they be born. Well, in ancient Egypt. You know, if it was a male child, they was killing them. Or at least they was instructed to kill them. So across our different captivities, um, you know, they've been trying to devour our children. Same today. But what's the point of all this? Job 16 and 12, I was at ease, but he had broken me asunder. He have also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces to set me up for his mark. So Esau the white man is setting up everybody for this mark. So when we read this, I was at ease, you know, because for the past 150 years, however long we've been living, up until just recently, you know, especially before 2020, we was at ease. We was going about our day-to-day -day routine, you know, we was at ease. It says, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. You know, this is not literal. This is uh, metaphoric speaking. You know, pretty much being under the mercy of the so-called white man. Now, what we mean, like right here, this couple, this Hebrew couple, they've been broken asunder. He's taken them by the neck. He's shaking them to pieces because they took their daughter, you know, after her home birth. Then like in my smart water lesson, you know, Esau destroying the nature. He's destroying the environment. He's making the stores go empty so that what? People can't buy food. People can't buy water. That's him breaking us asunder, taking us by our neck and shaking us to pieces. You know, this ain't literal. But all of this so that we can be set up for his mark. So what we're looking at here, Esau is trying to make an example of what not to do. That, that if anybody, especially a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, and Seminole Indian couple, if they try to have births at home, what Esau going to do? He going to come take their baby. He trying to make an example out of them. Because this didn't happen to a white couple or a Chinese couple or an Arab couple. You know, it happened to a Hebrew couple. So Esau is using them as an example. So that, you know, 
it's times of trouble, it's dangerous out there, white man can't be trusted, you know, other people might see this and be like, dang, I was going to have an at-home birth, but I guess I just go to the hospital. I don't want them to take my baby. Well, it ain't about that. Esau's setting up everybody for his mark because at-home births is going to increase. You know, as more people get laid off, as more banks collapse, corporations shut down, insurance company start going out of business, you know, people can't afford to have birth at a hospital if they ain't got insurance. Or because of inflation, insurance might not cover 100% of the costs. So you're going to have an out-of-pocket fee. So people might not be able to afford them out-of-pocket fees. You know what I'm saying? Or hospitals just might shut down completely. There's going to be blackouts. You know, so for one or more reason, at-home births is going to dramatically increase. And Esau knows this. So he's already trying to set the stage that if you dare give birth at home, you're going to have your baby snatched from you and you don't know when you're going to get it. Esau wants you to have a baby in the hospital so that what? He can devour the child as soon as it be born. You have it at home. You know they're going to come take your baby. You don't know when you're going to get it back. You might not get it back. And they ain't got their baby back yet. So it's going to be some kind of excuse. Or the baby suffocated. The baby was sick. There was complications after birth that the mother didn't see. It's going to be some stupid where, where they baby, you know, end up being found dead. So if you had a baby at home, they're going to take your baby. If you have the baby in the hospital, they still take your baby. Give it all these pokes. You know, with medication, I can't actually say the word, run all these tests on the baby, probably drop the baby, lose the baby. But ultimately, they're doing that so they can microchip the baby. So they use this family as an example of what's going to happen if you try to have your baby at home. Because Esau wants you to have your baby at the hospital no matter what, because he's setting this up. He's setting all these babies up for that mark. Because when we read Revelation 13 and 16, he calls up all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This includes infants, newborn babies. They're going to be microchips. Nobody's exempt. So that's what this story is about. It's setting up the people for his mark, that RFID microchip. Because if you theoretically, if you had your baby at home, you know, Esau can't microchip it. He don't know that the baby even exists. But you have it at a hospital. Best believe Esau going to be trying to devour the baby soon as it be born. So if he don't kill the baby, he's going to microchip the baby. Because whether he kill the baby or microchip the baby, either way, that baby is good as dead. You know, Esau can kill it, but Esau knows the scriptures. He knows he knows the missiles are coming, that anybody who get microchip um going gonna be destroyed by fire. So Esau knows exactly what he's doing. So rather he kill the baby or microchip the baby, he's already devoured your child. So again, Esau is setting up everybody for his mark because he wants everybody to get microchips parents and newborn babies don't be surprised if they do get their baby back it's microchips because it's going to be a certain point you know where esau going to be microchipping babies without the parents consent and that means all them babies going to be marked for destruction so that's coming babies being microchipped without their parents consent that's going to probably be the only way you will get your baby back if you get it took from you. It's one says microchips. So yeah, right now Esau setting up everybody for his mark. So Esau gonna be doing all kind of evil to scare the people into a corner. And that's what he did to this couple here. Now, don't be surprised that if his couples, 
Hebrew couples out there that's scared to have their baby at home now. They're like, F it, he's going to go to a hospital. Well, eventually your baby's going to get microchipped. Hey, that's it for this lesson here. Esau the damn devil. Watch your baby. Keep having him at home. Don't let Esau know about it. And if you do, if you be elect, you and your babies will be protected. So, till next time, Shalom.